After grabbing a quick breakfast, I hop on my bike and drive to the train station. I haven't been back here since my arrival in Izokaze. It's actually the same as I remember it. People bustle back and forth, and the whole station is blanketed with a buzz of conversations. For some reason, the familiarity is comforting. I purchase my ticket and find Kaori, Mayu, Valerie, and Yuna are already waiting on the platform. Mayu looking pretty in pink. Hey! Yuna and Valerie wave as I approach while Mayu smiles and Kaori nods in greeting. You made it. So did you. I glance around us. Where's Sho? Running late, like usual. Yeah, that sounds like him. He'll be here. I hope so. He has all our tickets. Kaori gives me a look. I mean, of course he'll be here. Why wouldn't he be? She crosses her arms, but otherwise falls silent. Even Yuna looks worried as she checks the time. We've still got a few minutes before the train comes. As the seconds tick by, even I'm beginning to lose hope. Thankfully, Sho soon appears. Hey guys, ready to get our heat on? We stare at Sho. You're late. Uh, that came out wrong. Yeah. He looks around, a wide grin on his face. Awesome, the gang's all here. The laborious roar of engines is heard before the train is sighted. Sho points to the approaching train. Just in time, too, because here's the train. You are cutting it really close, Sho. I'm right on time. Everyone quiets down as we get ready to board. We settle into our seats and enjoy the ride just ignoring the fact that Sho almost made us miss the train. When we arrive, we step off of the train and stretch our legs. There's a beautiful hotel in the distance and the hot springs are tucked in the mountains behind it. All right, here we are safe and sound. Let's go check in first. Probably a good idea. Sho leads the way to the hotel and we trail behind, enjoying the scenery. I breathe in deeply, letting the crisp mountain air fill my lungs. Just being here already helps me feel rejuvenated. We enter the hotel and the front desk agent gives us the keys to our rooms. Valerie and Yuna are bunking together while Kaori and Mayu share a room. Obviously, that leaves Sho and I to share the last room. The girls disappear into their rooms, but not before agreeing to meet right outside the hotel in 10 minutes. Sho and I enter our room. He immediately flops onto the bed closest to the window. I claim this bed. I'll take the other bed. That's my bed. You know what? Fine, whatever. It's just a bed. We're only here for one night. I'll take the other. All right. I'm fine with this bed. I drop my bag onto the bed closest to the wall and doorway. I don't like being next to the window anyway. Even with the curtains closed, I still feel too exposed. Exposed? Like, if I were to open the curtains, a face would be staring in. She'll look warily at the window. Don't say things like that. Do you want me to have nightmares? Yes. Sorry. Once we've had a chance to rest and put down our things, we head down to the lobby and wait outside. The girls trickle in a few minutes later. Now we're waiting for them. Should we go for a soak now? We want to save that for tonight. Trust me, it's way more relaxing at the end of the day. Not no. What should we do instead? Hmm. Sho pulls out the tickets and studies the text on there. Um, what about... Mayu's voice trails off. What about what? What if we toured the gardens? She points to a side clearing of blossoms and trees. They look really pretty. We get a discounted price for the tours, too, since we already have tickets to the hot springs. Oh, sweet. Let's just do that since we're right here. Valerie jumps excitedly. Let's do it, then. She races towards the gardens. Wait! Don't just run off like that! I mean, she's gonna got she's gotta come back eventually, so she's fine. Kari takes off after her as the rest of us scramble to catch up. Luckily, we arrive right before the next scheduled tour and we are all able to secure a spot with the group. 
The tour guide leads us on a gravel path and speaks non-stop about the history of the garden and each plant that we see. The history stuff is kind of cool. I wish I had the money to commission my own garden paradise. But does this guy really have to go into detail about every single plant? I survey the flowers and trees around me. Bright petals of color sway gently in the breeze and a few of them float towards our feet. I wonder how they keep this place so green at this time of year. As I glance around the group, everyone seems to be focused on the greenery around us, especially Mayu. She kneels beside a large yellow chrysanthemum and inspects its layered petals. The guide finishes his spiel about some other flower or something and leads the group further down the path. Mayu isn't paying attention and continues to look at the flowers. Mayu! She begins to stir, and I wait for her to rejoin us. But to my surprise, she steps off the path to examine another flower. She must not have heard me. She'll come back herself. Go after her. You know what? I'm going after her. Plus some alone time. She might get lost if I don't go after her. I slip away from the group and jog up, jog up to Mayu. She's ventured into a patch of bright yellow chrysanthemums. I'm a couple of steps behind her when I call out again. Mayu! She jumps in surprise and whirls around to face me. Unfortunately, she trips over her own feet and is precariously close to falling on her face. Catch! Instinctively, I step in and catch her in my arms. Mayu looks at me with wide eyes, then quickly looks away as her cheeks burn red. Thank you. I help steady her on her feet. No problem. Are you okay? She nods, then looks back up at me, her eyes glittering. Of course I did. Oh, uh, I'm not sure I would go that far. No, you did. She seems pretty adamant. Um, okay. Uh, and in the books, the hero always gets a reward. I'm not going to argue with you. Uh... Mayu quickly gets up on her toes and pecks me on the lips. I blink in surprise. Her face is bright red, but she wears a small smile. All right, smart man wouldn't argue anymore. I can't help but grin and pull her into a hug. I'll have to save you more often. We spend some time together before rejoining the group. The tour was very beautiful, and I enjoyed the leisurely pace we took around the gardens. Although, I did learn a lot more about plants than I ever wanted to know. Once the tour was over, we regrouped back outside the hotel. How did everyone enjoy the tour? Mayu sighs dreamily. Flowers were so beautiful. I felt like I was walking through a fairy tale. It's a good thing your knight in charming, shining armor was there for you, huh? I'm glad you had fun, Mayu. I thought it was really pretty too, but I found the history of the place to be the most interesting part. Kauri shrugs. Yeah, it was all right. It reminded me a little bit of home. On the outskirts of town, there was a cute little museum, which also included a garden walk. That sounds really nice. It was. I thought it was good, but I could have used less of all that flower talk. You aren't the only one. I thought it was informative. But enough of that. It's now time for the main event. Hot spring time. Fantastic. Is it really nightfall already? Yay. I cannot wait to soak in that glorious water. Neither can I. Same here. Bayou grins and even Kauri cracks a smile. We eagerly follow Sho into the hotel where he presents our tickets. We had to wait what felt like a couple of hours at least while they prepped the place. Afterwards, an attendant leads Sho and I to the mail changing room, while another attendant leads the girls away. As is customary, we strip down and rinse ourselves thoroughly before entering the adjoining hot spring. I can feel the difference in temperature as soon as I step out of the room. There are a few men spread out in the pool. They all look to be young and close to my age. Sho and I carefully waded to the hot spring. I dip my feet in and my toes tingle from the rushy heat. Carefully, I lower the rest of me into the water and instantly relax in the warmth. Ah. 
Shell lets out a contented sigh. Ah, this is the life. Yes, Brosif. I nod and close my eyes. I listen to the soft sounds of nature mixed with the low murmur of voices from other p patrons. The waters are mostly still, only rippling when someone enters or leaves the spring. The water gently eases out any remaining tension in my muscles, and as I let out a deep breath, I wish this moment can last forever. Hey guys. Akira Senpai. Akira? I blink my eyes open at the sound of a familiar voice. Akira has a small towel resting on his head. Fancy seeing you here. I was just about to say that to you. What are you doing here? We can't stay on campus today, so instead of practicing, my team and I decided to do the next best thing. Heal in the hot springs. I mean, rest and recovery, right? I squint at the other men in the spring. No wonder they all look my age. That's why everyone looks so familiar. I'm surprised we didn't recognize you guys. Akira smiles. We look different without our uniforms. It took me a few minutes before I recognized you two. In the distance, I hear a high-pitched squeal. Was that the girls? I think so. Their spring is right next to ours. Show perks up. Really? Yeah. I wonder what they're talking about. Let's find out. I don't like this idea anymore. You mean eavesdrop? It's not eavesdropping if we're just checking on their well-being. I'm sure they're fine. This can only end poorly. Great minds think alike, but I'm so comfortable. Show, this can only end poorly. I'm warning you right now. I don't know. I've seen enough anime to know how this ends. Show laughs. Lucky for us, we aren't in an anime. We'll be fine. I don't believe you. That doesn't make me feel any more confident about this decision. Akira climbs out of the water. Oh, not you're not on board with this too, are you? I know a way we can slip in unseen. Oh no, why are we doing this? How exactly do you know this? I can't give away my sources. That means he's done this before. Sho and I look at each other, then shrug. I might have expected this type of behavior from Sho, but definitely not Akira. This is going to end bad. We follow him out of the pool and into the changing room where we each grab towels. Then Akira leads us through an employee entrance and into a tunneled hallway. The hallway opens up right beside a large rock enclave surrounding the women's hot spring, which keeps us perfectly out of sight. This is bad. Giggles float around us as we peek over the rocks. Just our luck. Valerie, Yuna, Mayu, Kari, and Mei are right in front of us. Sho and I share a look as if to silently ask, Mei's here too? Then we shrug. If Akira's here, it only makes sense that Mei would be here too. It's your turn, Valerie. I think we're going to be in a lot of trouble here. Okay. Truth or dare? Dare. I, I don't know what I'm about to watch. Okay, truth. What? No, I picked dare. Of course you did. Right, truth. May turns to the rest of the girls. What should we ask her? Mayu blushes. Uh, um, what is it like being with a boy? Everyone stares at her with wide eyes, and Mayu's face turns even redder. Uh, why would you ask me that? Because... You know. Everyone's embarrassed now. Even Kauri's cheeks are pink, but I can't tell whether it's from the question or the heat of the water. Valerie blinks. Oh, right. Um, okay. You see. Her voice trails off and my breath catches in my throat. Is this really happening right now? Sho and Akira both focus intently on the conversation. How do I put this? Don't tell me. She pauses again as she thinks. Okay, basically, imagine you have a motherboard. On the different sockets, you have to add the different components. So first you put in the CPU, and then your RAM, a graphics card, 
Some sort of storage jibe. She doesn't know. Oh, and the power supply. You can't forget the power supply. That is what? Uh, supplies power. Yeah, she doesn't know. And once all those pieces are ready, then it's time to make sure all the wires are connected. Some graphics cards require a six pin connector while others need an eight pin. Some also require two sets of connectors depending on the power draw requirements. It's also important to pick a good case because you want to make sure everything is well protected but still has strong airflow. Having a strong cooling system is important when things heat up. Well, now that I know how to build a good computer, that doesn't answer the question. As Valor continues with her explanation, the girls struggle to follow along. Mayu's brows are furrowed, but she nods every so often, listening closely to Valerie's words. Yuna just seems plain confused, although she's trying her best to follow along. Kaori frowns thoughtfully, and I can almost see the gears in her brain trying to piece together the image Valerie is describing. Only Mei sits with her eyebrow raised and her arms, cross her arms across her chest. None of this makes sense. Valerie freezes and looks a little panicked. What? May studies Valerie's expression in discomfort. Then she smiles triumphantly, as if she's solved the puzzle. <laughs> oh, you've never actually been with. Valerie laughs loudly over May's voice. <laughs> You're so silly, May. What are you even talking about? Busted. Your analogy doesn't describe it at all. Kari crosses her arms. If she's not right, then what's it supposed to be? May grins mischievously. Well, when a man and a woman love each other very much... We're not seriously getting the talk, are we? What just went plop? I look over at Sho. He had leaned too far forward and accidentally wobbled an unstable pebble which rolled into the spring. Oh, you dumbass. As one, the girls look over in our direction, then shriek. Run! God damn it, I told you guys this was a bad idea. We scramble into the safety of the hallway and head back to, into the men's changing room. Do you think they saw us? They probably saw you. The blood leaves Sho's face. No! Akira, please, tell me otherwise. It was pretty dark. Maybe they just saw a silhouette. For your sake, I hope that's all they saw. If I fall, I'm dragging you down with me. Thanks, bro. Me? I was in the men's hot spring the entire time. Isn't that right, Akira? Of course. You guys! Oh, I'm hanging you out to dry. Once our pounding hearts subside, we return to the men's hot spring as if nothing happened. As soon as our time was up, we left with the rest of the group. This way, it could have been anyone who disturbed the girls. Akira rejoins his teammates while Sho and I change back into our clothes. We wait for the girls in the hotel lobby. We agreed to meet here for dinner, right? Sho answers nervously. Yep. After 15 minutes, they still haven't emerged. Sho shifts from foot to foot. Do you think they really saw me there and now they've gone ahead without us? I wouldn't blame them. They can't go without us. Who cares? I mean, I wouldn't blame them if they did, but can they really go without us? I mean, he's got the tickets for everything. I mean, they can't go without us, right? They can't go without us. You have the tickets. Yeah, but those were to get into the hot springs. Dinner is separate. Oh, well, you're dead then. Oh, then... Yeah, I suppose theoretically it's possible, but I bet they're just taking forever to get ready because they're women. What if this is all part of their plan for revenge? Leave us here waiting while they're all eating delicious food and laughing at us. I mean, they're going to do that either way. Or maybe they've retired to one of their hotel rooms, dressed in their PJs, continuing their conversation. So let them. I'm just going to stop you right there. I was just getting to the good part. That's why I'm stopping you. That's a pretty lame revenge as far as revenge go, though. I suppose that's true. We wait a while longer before the girls finally appear. Kauri glo glo 
Cowrie glowers at, at us. Glowers? Yeah, glowers, glares, whatever. Cowrie glowers at us as she marches over. Valerie and Yuna both look grave, and even Mayu looks stern. Sho leans over to me. God, they know. Should we just tell them? Keep cool. Shut your mouth. The girls finally pause in front of us. Um, are you okay? Kauri glares at the two of us and crosses her arms. Of course not. We are surrounded by perverts. Sho's eyes widen in panic, and I'm even beginning to feel anxious. I was just teasing him before, but maybe they really did see us. Try to play it off. It was all Sho's fault. Uh, or come clean. Well, I think if we come clean, that's just going to end up hurting things more. So we could try to play it off. As much as I want to sh throw show under the bus, I could probably try to talk my way out of this. I think I'm going to try and play this off. Oh, really? Did something happen? We were being spied on while we were relaxing in the hot springs. The audacity. Huh? That's terrible. Who would do such a thing? Show's voice is slightly higher pitched than normal. I glance at him and try to motion for him to calm down. He'll blow our cover otherwise. I don't know, but I intend to find out. Kauri scans the lobby, looking for perverts, I assume. Show relaxes. Maybe you should just let it go. Don't blow it, man. We were doing so well. What? How can you suggest that? let them get away with a free show? That's not right! Show and I instinctively take a step back from their indignation. Did you see who was watching you? No. Then how are you going to find them? The girls fall silent. We'll just know! I raise an eyebrow and cross my arms. Are you sure you were even being watched? Show catches my eye as if to say, good one, Brosif. Yes. How can you be so be sure if you didn't see anyone? Kauri falters and looks at the rest of the girls for backup. There was a pebble that rolled into the water from an outcrop of rocks. It's the perfect place for someone to hide and pee. Or maybe it was an animal. Show, shut your face. An animal? Yeah, the springs are outside. It's kind of hard to stop all the wildlife from running about. Okay, now he's starting to make sense. I suppose it's possible. She looks uncertainly at Kauri. Or it could have been a person. Those rocks were a little too conveniently placed to have just been a careless animal. Mayu nods. We told the hotel manager about it too. So now they're aware and also on the lookout. Show seems worried again, but after listening to this conversation, I'm convinced they have no way of finding out it was us. Okay, well, since you've already alerted the hotel, maybe we should just let them investigate and find the peeper and we can just enjoy our dinner. Yuna nods. That's probably the best course of action. Thank God I'm starving. Do you ever not think about food? Uh, you should have just seen what he was thinking about earlier. I haven't eaten since lunch. I think I'm allowed to be hungry. We've had a lot of excitement today. Mayu giggles. <laughs> Let's go before you faint from hunger. I hope the food is good. Me too. The tension lifts as we walk towards the dining room. That was too close for comfort. Whew, we got lucky there. When we arrive at the dining hall, we settle down at our table. The hotel offers a prefix menu, so all we had to do was confirm our number of dinners and then the waitress put in the orders for our meals. Whatever happened to May? She didn't want to stay after the incident, so she went to find her teammates. I wonder if she ever got a chance to finish her explanation, so did I'm assuming we knew May was here beforehand. Soon the food arrives, and it's a simple tray of rice, fish, and pickled vegetables. We quiet down as we all dig in. I hadn't realized how hungry I was until now. 
I feel a buzz in my pocket. As I pull up my phone, I notice all of my teammates are checking their phones, too. It's a group email from Dashu. They're reminding us about our coaching session that, will be that was scheduled for tomorrow. It seems they've received confirmation that Coach Ivan will be on campus to give us a few pointers before our match on Thursday. You know, where's a broad grin? Did you all get that email? No, we were just looking at our phones. Yes, we got the email. Yeah. I'm so glad Coach Ivan will be on campus. Yay for Coach Ivan. Me too. Oh, he's one of my idols. Really? Of course. He's a working legend. How come I've never heard of him before? He's almost as famous as the Akamis. Show looks thoughtful. Actually, Mayu, doesn't your family know him? Yes, but not very well. They respect each other, of course, but aren't close friends. That's why I've never met him. Ah. I'm looking forward to what he can teach this team. There's a reason why he's won three championships and received the MVP award twice. Because he's good. Wow, this guy sounds impressive. I heard no matter where he goes, he always wears his signature helmet. Gotta maintain some sort of appearance. Valerie's heard of him too? Huh, I've heard that too. I wonder if he'll wear it tomorrow. Probably. The team continues to talk excitedly about tomorrow's training session. I soak in each story or rumor the team shares about him, and the more I hear about him, the more enthusiastic I feel about meeting him. After we finish up our meals, I want to take another dip into the hot spring. After all, my first session was kind of interrupted. Sho happily agrees, but the girls firmly refuse. They say their goodnights and retire to their rooms. Sho and I relax in the hot water until we're both stifling yawns. Then we decide to return to our rooms as well. After all, we have an early morning train to catch. I'm exhausted and collapse onto my bed. As soon as my head hits the pillow, I fall asleep. Nice and relaxed and ready to go. I'm woken up at the crack of dawn by the most irritating clucking noises. Apparently, Sho's alarm is a rooster crowing. Bruh. Why? After unceremoniously stifling yawns and getting dressed, I make a quick sweep of the room to make sure I have pa I packed all of my things. Sho had to make two sweeps because he kept yawning during his first and forgetting where he had already looked. Yuno looks a little worried. We're all silent as we meet in the lobby. Mayu and Kauri are both wide awake and as perky as either of them could ever be. Yuna and Valerie seem to seem even more exhausted than Sho and I. I wonder what was going on in their room. Before my mind can wander too far, I snap back to reality and glance guiltily at Kauri, who has her eyes narrowed. Can she read my thoughts now, too? Good thing I wasn't thinking anything perverted. Why was Sho looking worried? Still in silence, we make our way to the train station. The train ride home feels even longer than the ride to the hot springs. I resist, resist the urge to ask, are we there yet? After what feels like an eternity, we arrive at Izokaze. Finally! Napping on the uncomfortable train was nearly impossible and my thoughts kept drifting to my warm bed. I say a quick goodbye to everyone and practically speed home. As soon as I arrive, I make a beeline for my room and collapse onto my bed. Nap time. Bright sunlight shines on my face and I slowly blink my eyes open. Then I jolt upright in bed. What time is it? Did I miss the coaching session? I fumble around looking for my clock, but it's only 11 a.m. Coach Ivan won't arrive until mid-afternoon. I have plenty of time. In that case, I wonder if anyone's free. Sho or Yuna? You know what, let's talk with Sho. Just as I decide what I want to do, I get a phone call from Sho. What's up, Rosef? No. Jeez. I pulled the phone away from my ear. What do you mean, no? You can't call me Brosif. Rosef is your name, Brosif. Uh... Okay. What's up? What are you doing this fine evening? I don't have any specific plans. 
Excellent. I'll meet you at the Izokaze Park. What's going on at the park? You'll see. See you in a few. He hangs up before I can pry for more. He's weird. Well, whatever it is, if Sho's excited, then it has to be fun. Then it has got to be fun. I hop on my bike and drive to the park. Tantalizing sense of food waft towards the streets, enticing, passer enticing passerby passersby. As soon as I search for a parking space, the park is illuminated with hanging lanterns and packed full of stalls. Is this the same type of festival? Or is this some type of festival? Joe lingers on the outskirts of the park and runs over to me. There you are, Brosif. What's all this? It's a festival, of course. No shit. Yeah, but which one? He looks incredulous. Jeez, you don't know. That's why I'm asking. No. Should I? Of course. Everyone knows it's the Festival of Dongos. You have no idea, do you? I just told you. They sell all kinds of dongo here. But why is there even a festival where they can sell dongo? He blinks. Does it matter? Now come on! He makes a fair point. Wait, aren't we going to wait for the others? Sho scratches the back of his head. This might just be a two-man operation. I get you. Sounds good to me. You have a girlfriend. I have a girlfriend. Sounds good to me. I nod. Just us guys. I'm game. Then let's get started. The Adventures of Brosif and Sho. Don't. We're not turning this into a series. I nod. Sho seems to be in an extra good mood. We enter the throng of people and browse the different stalls. This area sells all sorts of crafts and clothing. A small doll dressed in a fitted kimono catches my attention. I stop Sho and inspect it further. The wooden doll has hair as black as night as a, and a dainty face with blushing cheeks and red lips. Maybe Mayu would like this. Bye, why not? She's going to appreciate the gift. How much for this? The vendor names his price, and I pay it. Sho cautiously watches the transaction. Interesting choice. Is that a new thing you're into? It's a souvenir for my girlfriend. Sho's eyes go wide. What? You can't go buying souvenirs. Why not? Because now I'll have to buy one too. Sure. You can get one too. Oh, not this. I can't get the same one as you. She might find out and then she'd be upset. Okay. Then we'll look for something else. Ready for some food? Always. That's what I like to hear. We move away from the crafts area and straight into the sea of small eats. Sho can't decide on what to order and ends up ordering one of each item. His arms are full of more dongo than one man can eat. I manage to stop him before he applies the same tactic to each vendor and convince him to eat what he what we have first. We sit a lot. We sit down along the edge of the park at the picnic tables. As we settle in, a set of twins approaches us. Hey boys, are these seats taken? Although their faces are nearly identical, one girl has stick straight hair which flows in a glossy waterfall down her back and ends right above her ample bottom. The second girl plays with her curls and lets them bounce between her full bosom. Uh... They flash us smiles, revealing cute dimples, then sit across from us and set down their drinks. It's really nice of you to save us seats. They seem to be around our age. The girls look at show with interest as they play with their straw the straws at their drinks. Do you go to Ace? Considering Ace is the only university around here, it's not an unusual guess. Um He seems dazed. Yeah! He's in the pilot program. Pilots? Show nods, still as confused as before. He shoots me questioning glances as if unsure whether or not this is actually happening. He is so out of his element. The girls look at each other, then giggle. What are you doing after the festival? They're what they, they want to hang out. Show's eyes widen and he looks at me in astonishment. He looks like he's about to agree when he quickly shakes his head. Actually, we have plans with our girlfriends later tonight. Aw, 
really? Show nods, although more reluctantly this time. Both of you are already taken? Oh well. Shrugging, she scribbles something on a napkin and then tucks it into Sho's hand. Her fingers linger her fingers lingers on Sho's as she leans in close and speaks in a breathy voice. Well, if you guys ever want to hang out, I'm sure we'll be available. Oh, I'm sure you will be. Then slowly return to their feet and purposely give us an eyeful of their chest. As they walk away, they exaggerate the hypnotic sway of their hips. What just happened? They were being so nice, the magic of not being single. No idea. The magic of not being single, that is what's just happened here. You don't know? Sho looks at me with intrigue. You're forbidden now, Mr. Shinjiro. He blinks. Huh? What do you mean? Now that you're spoken for, get ready for a lot more attention from girls, my friend. That doesn't make any sense. How would they know I already have a girlfriend? We just met. They've got a sense for these things. You know how women are. Show nods. They have a lot of secret senses. I remember reading that once you're in a relationship, you carry yourself with more confidence. You don't appear desperate or needy, which makes you more appealing. But who wants to talk about that psychological mumble jumbo? I think that was a fluke. A fluke? Yeah, I've tried so hard to get a girl's number before and met with a 0% success rate. This was just a random outlier. Hmm. You don't sound convinced. You're not wrong. Okay, here, watch. I watch as show stands. He spots another girl around our age waiting in line to get some food and approaches her. They chat for a while. When the girl pulls out her phone, Sho looks shocked. He furiously shakes his head and retreats back to me as the girl sadly looks on. What was that all about? I tried to get her number, and then she was about to give it to me? What is happening? The younger me would have killed for this power, this power that I cannot use! I pat Sho on the back. I don't know what to tell you, man. Sho sinks into his chair and sniffles. I never thought I'd see the day when Sho would be sad that girls are into him. Oh, that poor, sad little man. We spend the rest of the evening checking out the festival and fending off single girls, much to Sho's anguish. Once we've seen everything there is to see, we go our separate ways and head home, and I head home. It's about time for our session with Coach Ivan. I double-check my email, then make my way to the pre-combat room. That's where we're supposed to meet him. As I walk in, I see the rest of my team crowded around the holla table. All in uniform. I can't believe you sent all this. This is incredible. Yuna grins. Yup, this consultation isn't just for the pilots. It's for everyone on the team. I'm sure we can all benefit from it. Valerie scrolls through the projected hologram, pausing at an image of a gear loaded with statistics. As I approach, I can make out what looks like the game plans of previous professional matches, complete with sketches, tactics, movements, and calls. This sort of edited information is incredibly valuable for all parties on the team. Joe's the first to notice me. Brosif! Once he sounds my arrival, the rest of my team grin or wave at me. Hey, guys! Sho puts an arm around my shoulder. Are you ready to meet Ivan? Yes, but you need to calm down. You know it. There's nothing left to do but wait for Ivan to arrive. Valerie and Mayu continue to scroll through the hollow table while the rest of us take seats on the couches lining the walls. What do you guys think Coach Ivan is like? Is Kauri nervous? She keeps a cool facade, but her gaze constantly darts towards the door. I heard he's the shot caller on his team. He's the one leading the tactics and pulling in the high numbers. Mm-hmm. He's even received the MVP award twice already. I remember they mentioned that yesterday as well. I racked my brain trying to understand why I hadn't heard of him before. The only player I remember who won two MVP awards on the national stage is, str the, is Strongarm Gear. Right. 
That's his Elias for the global stage. Hmm. I always thought it was a little strange that he never even took off his helmet for interviews. Again, gotta uphold an image. He doesn't need to. He doesn't even speak in interviews. Kauri nods. What? That's his persona, and it's worked really well for him. Hearing all of this just makes me even more curious about what kind of person Coach Ivan is. Wait, how is he going to coach us? Does he even know how to talk? Why are you asking stupid questions? Don't be stupid, Show. Of course he can talk. Kauri blinks. I think... Actually, I've heard rumors that his face was half burnt during a racing motorcycle accident. That's why he always wears a helmet. I think I remember reading that, too. Ouch. I cringe just remembering the rare couple of times I fell off my bike. I didn't even want to imagine how painful it would be to fall off my bike while racing. What, what if he's scary? I've heard he yells at first-year pilots, or worse. Shut your face. Mayu's eyes widen. What? what? Valerie pats Mayu sympathetically on the back. It was nice knowing you. Her eyes well up with tears. Stop being mean, Valerie. I place an armor on Mayu. I won't let anything happen, do you? She looks up at me and blushes. Aw. Okay. Valerie's just teasing anyway. Valerie smirks. Or am I? Ah. <sighs> The door slides open, catching all of our attention. A muscular man, well over six feet tall, commands the room. He's wearing a leather jacket with black pants. A polished helmet hides his face. He crosses the room with thunderous steps and pauses before us, as large and silent as a mountain. Holy crap, is that intimidating. The group glances nervously at each other. Nobody wants to break the silence. Uh, hello. The helmet slowly turns towards me, and I fidget, fidget beneath its, his gaze. I can't see his eyes, which makes this all the more disconcerting. After a moment, his helmet surveys the rest of the team. Kauri remains stoic while Mayu tries to make herself small. Both Yuna and Valerie look uncertain while Sho seems confused about how he should feel. Coach Ivan nods. He puts his hand on either side of his helmet. Sho catches my eyes in anticipation. Are we actually going to see what's underneath the helmet? What? Okay. Coach Ivan pulls, uh, pulls it off in one sweeping motion, revealing a shiny bald head and the most beautiful mustache I've ever seen. Underneath his mustache is a beaming smile. Eagle! day to make your acquaintance yes what his jacket has somehow unzipped itself and reveals washboard abs I can only achieve in my dreams under the wings of experience I shall teach you to soar the skies that's lieutenant Armstrong Kari's face falls she looks like her nightmare has come to life the rest of the girls are mirrors of confusion. Sho, on the other hand, looks as if his dreams have come true. Do you know someone named Tatsuo by any chance? Ivan looks at Sho. Even with his smile, his piercing gaze is unsettling and Sho scoots back. You speak of my nephew? Oh dear Christ, that's his nephew. That explains a lot. Yuna stands up. Hi, Mr. Podubny. Thank you for agreeing to coach our team this Podubny? afternoon. Podubny? Utter not my family name, for formalities between friends must not exist. Oh, um, okay. Ivan, thank you. I'm so confused right now. He nods. Of course. We will begin with lesson one. To sprout into a magnificent tree, we must first water the roots. The foundations? 
Yes, fiery flower. The roots. Ivan motions us to the hologram. The holograph. We cautiously approach, and Ivan projects an image of a seed. First, the seed requires sunlight, water, carbon dioxide, and rich soil. The key to remember is the symbiotic relationship between plant and environment. Through light energy absorbed by chlorophyll, conversion occurs of carbon dioxide and water to create glucose and oxygen. If I've fallen asleep and started dreaming, I'm in a in class again. Jeez, this is like listening to Valerie explain. Shut your face! You're gonna get us in trouble. Shh. Do you want to get caught or what? Show freezes mid sentence and closes his mouth. Valerie eyes us suspiciously, then shrugs and resumes listening to Ivan ramble about some plant mumbo jumbo. Understood. He is met with silence. Ivan uses his finger to elongate his mustache in great thought. Demonstration will triumph explanation. Yes, please. Ivan nods solemnly. Make haste to the simulations. As soon as we enter the simulation, Ivan sets up sets us off to spar with AI gears. Once the match is over, he points out where we lost focus or how we could have prevented getting hit, then gives us suggestions on how to tighten up as a unit. Once he shared his insight, he sends us back in for another round. While, while we fight AIs, Ivan and Valerie talk quietly about simple fixes to our gears. He seems pleased by what Valerie shares with them. I assume she mentioned the original tweaks she added to our gears when she first joined the team. The more Valerie talks, the more animated Ivan becomes. Yuna watches everyone closely and jots down notes on her tablet. I have a feeling she's recording feedback on her session with Coach Ivan as well as recording feedback from our simulated matches. Based on the brief notes Ivan pr provided on our first match, our second match felt worlds apart from the first. It's quite apparent that he won two MVP awards. He truly li lives up to his title of Strong Arm Gear. Lieutenant Armstrong. So long as you can decipher what he says. We exit the simulator feeling satisfied and more confident than before. Ivan greets us by the holo table. And so the dial of time lands for my departure. Thank you so much, Mr. Pu- His icy gaze falls on show. <laughs> I mean, thanks, Ivan. Thank you, Ivan. Ivan smiles. We appreciate your time. And all this data analysis will help me fine-tune the gears to give him that extra boost. We can't lose after a training session like that. Ivan begins to sniffle. Is something wrong? He rubs his eyes with his forearm. You guys. Suddenly, Ivan scoops all of us into a group hug. Make me so proud. Oh dear lord, what is going on? He squeezes us so tightly I gasp for air. Show mouths help me while trying to wriggle free. Mayu looks terrified as she's squished into Yuna's chest. Valerie tries to hug Ivan's arm. Okari looks like a deer in headlights and struggles to break free. Ivan doesn't notice. Hey! After one last squeeze, he releases us and lets out a deep sigh. And so the nest perch on the branch finds its awakening. Go forth, hatchlings! His helmet magically materializes in his hand. He puts it on and zips up his jacket then offers us a final thumbs up. We wave goodbye as he heads out, calling out our thanks to his retreating form. Man, I am so pumped for our match tomorrow. Me too. Should we get some practice in while we can? Kari shakes her head. I think Valerie needs to make the recommended calibrations first. Yep. They aren't major control changes or anything, so you won't feel a difference while piloting. You'll just get better energy efficiency based on piloting patterns I even pointed out. Hey, that'll still go a long way. Kauri nods. That's exactly what we need. Oh, huh, okay. So, what do we do until then? It is reading week. No, I don't say it. No, no! Time to study show. Kauri covers her ears. 
you. Many things. Anything but that. So... Bayou sighs, then glances my way as if seeking approval. He won't focus if someone doesn't keep him on track. He won't take care of me? Sure thing. Uh... Let's see here. This is tough. Sure thing, or you won't take care of me? Uh, you know what? Sure thing. We'll just go with it. She, She's known him for a long time. She'll keep him on track. Yeah, of course. Make sure you keep the slacker in line. Show size. Guess I don't have a choice in the matter. Nope. Go do your homework. Mayu smiles, and the two of them are off. You're all good then, Valerie? Yep. I'll send a text when I'm done. Okay. Thank you. I'd better get to studying, too. I nod and watch her head off. Well, since I'm already on campus, I'll go submit my report on the coaching session. I wave goodbye. Do you want some company? No, it's okay. I'll be doing some boring stuff anyway, and I'm not a fan of over-the-shoulder spectators. Yeah, I know that. I nod. All right. Let me know if you need anything. Sure. With some time on my hands, I head to the library to actually squeeze in a study session. The library is packed, which I guess makes sense since exams are right around the corner. After circling the desk a couple of times, I manage to sneak into a desk stall just as another student is leaving. I feel like a car trying to find a parking space in a crowded lot. A few hours go by in a blur. Valerie texts at one point saying the changes are done, but otherwise, nothing eventful happens. That's all the studying I can do in one sitting. I pack up my tablet and wonder if anyone's available, and we're going to see who's available next time. I'm going to end the episode here. Been quite an exciting day. As always, though, if you did enjoy the video, make sure to let me know by hitting the like button down below or leaving a comment. It really does help me out. And if you're new to the channel or have not done so already, unleash your power by hitting the subscribe button down below today as well, and I will see all you heroes in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. May the Force be with you, and have a great rest of your day. Take care.